foundation about visual art and photography. If you want to help us, just drop a donation on buymeacoffee.com slash berlinexplorer. Well, welcome to this 50 minute of experience and today I'm with Mary Serkovich Pilas. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, hi Mary. Uh, so, uh, hi. hi Emiliano. To start this podcast with you, I would like to, uh, if you can introduce a bit yourself and then we can uh, talk about uh, your pictures uh, and your activities okay okay that sounds great so my name is mary sankovic pilash complicated name um i am from australia originally so i was born and raised in australia and i came to live in zagreb in 1992 so soon it'll be 30 years since i started living in zagreb Um, I'm originally a musician by trade, a singer, but unfortunately in the last year and a half, as with many artists, uh, that's kind of gone down the drain, <laughs> basically because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, I like street photography in terms of my photography, and I've been doing street photography now for five years. Um, I shoot mainly in Zagreb, although I do love to travel, but unfortunately at the moment it's near impossible to travel, um, but it's opening up more and more, yeah. I shoot in black and white. Um, I also like besides street, document, uh, street photography, I like documentary photography as well. So I dabble in that a little bit too. Um, and that's more or less all I can say for now. <laughs> so if you want to ask some questions. Yeah, now. so perfect. Uh, so Mary, uh, I have seen that, uh, yeah, you have a, a big archive of photography in the street photography. You are one of the curators of uh, Badass Black and White. And mm -hmm. uh, you also are part of the team of Black and White Street Photos uh, on Instagram. And, that's right. Uh, I wanted to know, uh, so you are, you are the founder of uh, Black and White Street Photos, right? That's right, that's right. I okay. started that, yeah, last year because I felt that although I was already a curator on Badass Black and White, I, I forgot to mention that I'm also a curator on Street Makadam on Instagram yeah. too. And I'm also a member of the Zagreb Photo Club and along with my friend Ivana, we um, curate photos for their Instagram as well. Um, in terms of find, founding uh, black and white street photos, I felt that uh, I just wanted to do something for myself, like how can I say, to uh, show other artists that I would choose. And, um, and then slowly I saw that it was growing and now I have a whole team with me. I love them all. Uh, there's David Kugelmas, Kugi, There's um, Rus, we still don't know his name. He is Icy Dreams. There's Richard, Richard Peterson Photography, Fuji Badger, and Chris Finnegan, who is uh, Clicky Bait on, um, okay. so I will on Instagram. I will contact all of them to make a podcast with them also. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. And yeah, I'm uh, really uh, curious about, so it's, uh, do you use uh, uh, to just share the picture of others uh, on your uh, uh, page or uh, do you do it also some other activities? Uh, for the moment, we just share the photos, but we would like to maybe do some, like this podcast, we might do some live interviews with artists in the future or perhaps uh, do some reels or something like that. Maybe even do some tips and tricks regarding street photography as well. But that's all still like, you know, in the future for now, we're just sharing. Yeah, just sharing other people's work. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. I've seen uh, the page and I've seen also that's uh, the same you know, for uh, Badass Black and White. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's something different that we have uh, on um black and white street photos on our page is that every Thursday we have a guest curator 
which mm -hmm. is really nice. So we see somebody else's visions and uh, the artists that they like. And in many cases, we discover new artists because we hadn't heard of these people before. And that's really nice. Yeah. How does it work usually? Uh, what do you mean? How does it work? Uh, like the, the guest, guest curator? The guest curator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, what I do is I just uh, choose from the people that I follow um somebody that week who will be the guest curator there's no real like you know a system that i use or anything uh i just uh choose like uh spontaneously let's say somebody and, that and, week and they send you the picture right that's right they send the pictures and then i post them on thursday okay thursday. Perfect. perfect so uh yeah. to jump back to your pictures uh in this podcast uh, uh we talk about uh, the experience we do it as a photographer but not only and the people are involved in photography and what uh, are the experience you got during uh, uh, your uh, process in uh, photography and how do you use the tools uh, and if mm -hmm. there are connection you made in your life uh, because of these tools uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, what I will ask you is to choose uh, to choose uh, uh, and tell me what are the experience uh, you made uh, during your uh, research in photography what attracts you what uh, what would you like to to get in touch in the future also Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I have to say that um, I really love the old school photographers, black and white old school photographers, uh, especially uh, people from Magnum. Yeah. Like, for example, the classics. Yeah. Henri Cartier-Bresson, um, Robert Doineau. Actually, uh, just to sidetrack, my name on Instagram is The Marvels of Daily Life. And uh, this was taken from a quote by... Uh, Robert Duano. So he's a, if I had to choose a favorite photographer, he would be it. <laughs> yeah. Um, other photographers like Elliot Erwert, Joel Meyeritz, um, Saul Leiter. Yeah. So I really like the old school um, photographers. And I think you can see that in my style as well, that I do it very straight. Let's put it that way. And um, yeah, so they're my biggest influences, definitely black and white, uh, because I feel that I can convey more emotions with black and white. You're, how can I say, there's no colors, there's no, you know, pops of red, for example, and stuff like that. Uh, so you're really concentrated on the emotions, the composition, the story. Uh, I I would say that uh, my biggest goal regarding my photography is to convey a story. Uh, so I do like storytelling a lot. And when I recently, when I've been posting on Instagram, I used to do individual photos, but now more and more, I like to do like a series of photos. And from, for example, six to 10, 10 is the limit on Instagram per post. So I like to do series of photos because I feel that individual photos are wonderful and beautiful, of course, but I think I can convey more of a story when I have a series, yeah? Because sometimes, for example, a photo of a hand, what does this mean? But if you put the hand and maybe then you put the face and then you maybe put a pigeon and something, you can tell a whole story, like a triptych or something like this, yeah? Um... Um, uh, I can tell you also about when I started doing street photography. No, oh, right. And that, and that was also that was after I completed the Camino de Santiago five years ago from Porto. I walked from Porto de Santiago to Compostela, so from Porto in Portugal to Spain, up in northern Spain. And um, I had liked photography a lot before, but. I have three children, so I had to put my camera on on the shelf, as they say in Croatian. I basically had to hang up my camera and only took snapshots of my children while they were growing up. But it was after that uh, Camino experience that I really started to love photography again 
and most especially the street photography because I was taking photos of people walking. I was taking people's of the photos of people, you know, in the cities, in the countryside. And, yeah, and it really opened up photography for me again after I did this walk. Yeah, so... So um, I, I would love to know uh, if uh, in your experience uh, did you mm -hmm. go in touch with someone in a way uh, you cannot forget? Uh, I mean, there's, uh, <laughs> there's so <laughs> many. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's... for sure there are many. But yeah, there someone come, many, to, yeah. come up to your mind right now? Yeah, the, there was one, well, a month and a half ago, so in July, I went again on the Camino and I did the same Camino again from Porto to Santiago de Compostela. And uh, there were many people, really a lot of people that I have like really interaction with and um, that really like, you know, uh, stayed in my heart. Let's put it that way. But one lady in particular and uh, was in a place called Pontevedra. So this was in Spain and uh, she was Uh, sitting on a window she was like on the first story on the first floor on a window and I was walking along and I unlike the other walkers that just go from one place to another I like to stop I like to look around and um, and I saw her on the window up there and she was very old and later I talked with her neighbors she's 96 okay and she was sitting there and she literally looked like a queen she really she was like she didn't have any crowd or anything like that but she had some sort of aura you know and then she saw me taking her photo and she started posing and it was like I couldn't believe it and then I you know I air blew her kisses and she blew them back and you know I sent her a hug and she sent me a hug from the first floor <laughs> So it was a really, really nice experience. So I'll never forget that. But there are so many beautiful experiences like that where, you know, like um, later on when they realize you're taking their photo, they start to smile. Then you talk to them later and stuff like that. But that is a recent experience that I really remember quite vividly. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I feel it. Uh, that also the emotion uh, uh, go really uh, deep, you know. Uh, yeah definitely <laughs> and um let's let's talk about uh, um so you are you are totally in the straight uh, photography uh of the whole you could say history, that you know? yeah. Uh, yeah yeah and uh, uh what i like uh, in some of your picture uh, especially the way you you engage with the portrait uh mm -hmm. i have to say uh Maybe less for sure, some other picture uh, in the street, but yeah, we are not always lucky to find something in the street. That's that's sure. Definitely. <laughs> True. Um, what uh, do you have uh, right now, for example, on Instagram, 1052 uh, posts? And uh, um, do you feel uh, that uh, Instagram is the right place for you to, to show <laughs> images? Yeah, you Ooh. as a curator in this case uh, of different page on Instagram. And I ask to myself, uh, it, is, uh, it is the only way you share your work or uh, do you do it also exhibition or books or what else? Okay, so uh, first of all, regarding Instagram, I have a love-hate relationship with Instagram, and I think everybody does. Um, on the one hand, I love it because of the community and meeting different people from different places. For example, you, yeah, we met on Instagram. You found me on Instagram, and that was fantastic. And I have many other experiences like this. So I love that part of Instagram, the community, um, conversing with like-minded people, uh, sharing photographs that people sometimes appreciate, sometimes don't. It depends. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. But it's the community that I love on Instagram. What I don't like about Instagram is, uh, and I have been doing this less and less Uh, is posting just to post, you know, because the algorithm will do something and nobody will see it if I don't post every single day. So I have been posting less and less lately uh, because I'm very frustrated. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but I'm 
unhappy with the algorithm, let's put it that way. And, uh, and again, I think that everybody's really frustrated with it because I don't get to see photos from other artists that I follow for God knows what reason. Also, Instagram is getting more into videos, which I am not into. I just do still photography. I do absolutely no videos whatsoever um unless it's you know like a concert of my kid or whatever you know I just don't do video and yes yeah, so it it has that wonderful aspect of the community of being able to share your work on a platform but it also is very frustrating with the artificial intelligence the algorithm which at, and for example some of my friends accounts have disappeared uh I have several friends for example street badass uh, Todd's account disappeared. He doesn't know why, because the algorithm thought he's a bot. Another uh, friend's uh, page, uh, the pictorial list, disappeared as well for the same reason. Photos get stolen. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff happens, really horrible stuff actually, because all of these people put a lot of hard work into their, you know, into curating the photos, sharing the photos, sharing their own work. So it's very frustrating on the one hand. Yeah, but... it was a network for sure. It was not uh, born to to make a curatorial project, and uh, yeah, we in a way used yeah. like that. But in a way or another, it's always good uh, in any case. Uh, if it's Instagram or uh, something else, it's always good to make backup somewhere else uh, to to bring exactly. down. And uh, and that's why in a way uh, with Berlin Explorer uh we work on that i mean uh when i found that when i made this project uh, my idea was yeah for sure not only to future people because i feel uh, in a way yeah it's nice to have uh, to discover but uh, we don't have uh, the the time to discover uh, in all of the pages exist until yeah. now and uh, yeah exactly I, I wanted to do it also something different because uh, in this case, as a curator and uh, editorial uh, uh, curator, so then uh, I really care about uh, what is inside of uh, of a project. I mean, when I work, for example, I work for the most for uh, books, for other mm -hmm. photographers. Right. And, That's uh, cool. And not a lot for exhibition because also the exhibition for me is a is a is a way in a way it's nice because yeah you can see the the picture uh, printed big uh, and uh, you can have a connection with, uh, but I feel like uh, uh, the time uh, is a limit there. Uh, I mean, yeah. you, you can yeah. do that and you cannot uh, really then enjoy the connection with the, with the photograph. And so then uh, yes. I decided to, to move on uh, on the print uh, book, uh, for for example, and uh, to don't print too many books uh, and to reserve uh, the limited edition because in a way or another, uh, the photography is totally personal. And uh, if it's uh, true that uh, more uh, the photograph uh, is seen from others in the world, more ca everyone can benefit, but in other ways also uh, start to be mainstream. So then what mean yes. that? Uh, yes, yes, I agree. It can be also totally misunderstood or lost the value has the photograph. So mm. um, in my way, I think, uh, uh, and this is why um, I print now this editorial publication of the future i want to do it so take a bit more time take a bit more money but uh, for me yeah. it's, totally, uh, it's definitely the the way i want to publish and the one i want to create people uh putting them on a on a print and uh, mm -hmm. make available only for few in the world to have this uh, um editor publication as uh, collectors so in a way i want to give the value to these pictures are posted on instagram to, right. to be seen uh, many and many times uh, and to collect these books uh, and you know when you want to go to watch uh, that picture inspired you you have there you have in your library you know you have in your bookshelf yeah 
So, I know. <laughs> I've got a lot of photo books. I'm, I'm a little bit addicted to photo books, I have to say. <laughs> I'm totally, I'm totally addicted. I, I mean, now I'm in Berlin, I move it here, but I have uh, almost all the book in Italy. And uh, yeah, I don't know how uh -huh. to move them because they are really yeah. thousand. And uh, I also collected a lot of books of a lot of people. And I have to say that uh, yeah. it's always something uh, inspire me a lot uh, because uh, I like to touch. I like to have this time, you know, uh, that you decide how much time you want to spend on a book or not. But also to absolutely play, play with the with the page. Sometimes in my work, for example, I I try to work much more on the layout design and to compose. Uh, sometimes. Uh, in a different way than a classical way to to make uh, a kind of game inside of uh, of the book an invisible game that uh, uh, you can know only there is this uh, uh, playing uh, when you are watching un until the end right right cool and that sounds really cool yeah so to go back uh, because we were totally <laughs> off topic uh, to go back <laughs> uh, uh, what okay. uh, what do you uh, will love to experience uh, in the near future. Okay, so uh, uh, sorry, Emiliana, just to finish your question, I'll be very short yeah. uh, because you asked me what else instead of Instagram as well. Well, I also have a web page, I think I sent it to you, and it's also the marvels of daily life.com. Yeah. But also, in terms of exhibitions, um, I have had been at many, many exhibitions in terms of like single photos or maybe like a small series of photos, but I've never had my own solo exhibition. So this is to connect you with the next question is this is something that I would like to do definitely yeah. um, in the future is to have a solo exhibition. So that's my big, let's say goal or whatever, wish, desire, whatever you want to call it. Um, and regarding books, I would like to also self-publish or publish with someone a book about, you know, maybe Zagreb or some sort of topic, maybe just umbrellas. I love rain and umbrellas. I think you might have noticed yeah, yeah. that too yeah, <laughs> on my feet. A lot of, um, uh, <laughs> a lot of dogs. There are a lot of shadows. A lot of dogs. Um, yeah, lots of dogs. I love dogs as well. Another favorite subject. And um, so, yeah. Also. You have a lot of group of people. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. So, you know, maybe for me to have a really close look at my photos and to select a subject or a topic and do something with them not just let them you know die on instagram just that, and but, uh, <laughs> i wanted to go with not because it's uh, it's what i do and then uh, yeah it's it's um it was my curiosity you know yeah 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 so yeah that that's my wish to have uh one day a solo exhibition hopefully i hope and also to publish something yeah yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's really nice. So, um, thank you a lot for your time, Mary. And uh, if anyone, thank you, Emiliana. Thank if you. anyone wants to see the work of Mary, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, can go on the <laughs> and we'll find the, the page, the personal page of Mary, the website, uh, and uh, all the uh, account she manages as a founder, as curator, but as black and white, black and white street photos, uh, photo club, uh, Zagreb, street Magadam, and so on. And uh, if uh, do you want to engage this podcast, you can uh, uh, click on the last link on description for a voice message, and then you can uh, comment, uh, cryptic, or what else you want to do it. So it was nice to meet you and was, I think, a great opportunity. Thank you, Emiliano. It was great meeting you and talking with you. And thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Learn more about our project at allmylinks.com slash Berlin Explorer or visit our Instagram and follow Berlin Explorer Project.